Job 33 and verse 28. He has redeemed. Did you see that? Job 33 and verse 28. Please, if you have it in NIV, you can do that. He has redeemed. Or oh, let's go with what you have there. He has delivered me from going down. Someone say from going down. Going down. <laughs> to the peace. And I shall leave to enjoy the light of life. How many of you know that shall be your testimony? If you believe God's word, let me hear you shout the loudest. Amen. I want you to declare this word one more time. One to go. God has delivered me from going down to the pit. And I shall live to enjoy the life. This year, 2018, you shall live to enjoy the light of life. I said this year, 2018, you shall live to enjoy the light of life. Your case shall not be the darkness of life. Your case shall not be the darkness of life. You shall enjoy the light of life. If you believe it, let me hear your amen. Lord, bless your word. Anoint it with power. Let every word that proceeds from my mouth be the anointed word of God that will bless the life of your people. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Look for five people, prophesy to them in the name of Jesus. No more peace. No more peace. Come on, tell them in the name of Jesus. Make sure you declare it in the name of Jesus. No, in the name that is above every other name, no more pits. Every pit the enemy has planned for you in January, February, March, April, May, June, July. August, September, October, November, December, you are rising from the peak to the peak. Somebody did not hear me. I said, in the name of Jesus, God is taking you from the peak to the peak. Did you hear me? Somebody did not hear my accent. The opposite of the peak is the peak. P E A K. In the name of Jesus, wherever life puts you in 2017, you are going higher 2018. By the power of the Holy Ghost, academically, you are going higher. Spiritually, you are going higher. Financially, you are going higher. Marishally, you are going higher. Emotionally, you are going higher. In your career, you are going higher. If you receive his head, receive it in the name of Jesus. Sit down like you are going to the top. Many times, the devil becomes a construction engineer. To make sure that you don't rise. But the devil is a liar. You are not hearing me. I said the devil is a liar. The Bible said the Lord said to my Lord. Psalm 110. Sit at my right hand. Until I make your enemies. Your footstool. Today wherever the devil thought he will put you. The devil is going into that pit. If you shout amen with power, the Lord will lift you higher. My God, I said the Lord will lift you higher. I dismantle every every tractor, every spiritual dredging machine that has been sent to construct a hole for your destiny. I command it to explode by fire. Any agent of darkness that 
has been sent your way to dig a pit for you may the lord dismantle it by fire may the lord scatter it by fire may the lord show them into confusion if you believe it shout a big amen like thunder tell your neighbor one more time no more pits no more pits God has destined for us to operate at the peak, not in the pit. Tell your neighbor, I'm destined for the peak, not the pit. In the place where we read, it was a confession of a man that knew what it means to fall from the top to the bottom. If you talk about sorrow, one of the first people you would ever mention in the scripture is a man called Job. Pull up the scripture one more time. Job 33. Yeah. Say, God has delivered me. Can you hear this? Even when he was making this statement, he was still in the pit. Ladies and gentlemen, you must understand that faith is not the denial of facts. Am I making sense? Faith is declaring the word of God because you believe what God has said concerning you despite the facts. You are not hearing me. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 4 that despite the state of Abraham, he hoped... A, do you know what it means to hope against hope? Oh, yeah, y'all yeah, don't understand what I'm saying. Like, Abraham was fighting hope with hope. They said no hope. He still used hope to fight hope. My God. I don't know that you understand. Where people tell you you will not rise. You tell them in that place, not only will I rise, I will rise high. That's hope against hope. Are, are, you, are you listening to me? Where the doctors told you, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am, you can't get pregnant. You said, listen to me. Not only get pregnant, kings will come out of me. Where your GPA is telling you you can't amount to anything good. You say, watch me get a PhD on this tip. If you believe it, let me hear your amen like thunder. You must understand that you might be in the pit today. That doesn't stop you from being in the peak tomorrow. Nobody has a say so over your destiny. If man did not make you, man cannot break you. If man did not make you, man cannot stop you from going to where God has destined for you. This year, you are going to the peak. Shout another big amen. What is a pit? What is a destiny pit? A destiny pit is a depression in life. A situation in life where you find yourself, where you can no more smile. Where your joy is changed to mourning where sorrow seems to overwhelm you where it seems like there's no brightness that is coming your way that is a pit when situations go contrary to your plans you thought by now everything should be okay but you discover that the more you keep hoping the more things don't change that is a pit where it seems like you are just stuck and you can't get out you are below the surface. You even the people that you know you are better than now are operating greater than you. That is a pit. Today I see you coming out of that pit. Tap, tap, tap your neighbor. Tell your neighbor I'm coming out. I'm coming. If your neighbor is not talking to you, you better look for somebody that agrees with you. Tell them, look here, honey, I'm coming out. Tell your neighbor I'm coming out. I can't hear you with Holy Ghost voice. Tell them, I'm coming out. My God, they can't hear you. Tell them, I'm coming out. Not next year. This year, I am. This year, I am coming out. Out of financial problem, you are coming. My God, tell them, I am. Come. Begin to demonstrate it. I am. They didn't hear you. Tell them, I am coming out. My children coming out. My man is coming out. My destiny coming out. My fire coming out. If you believe in, wave your hands and shout a big hallelujah. Job said, God has delivered me. Can 
I tell you, God sees you at the top. My dear Reverend, Reverend Mass would always say, he sits high, but he looks low. <laughs> the only reason why he looks low is because he's looking for who to raise next. Tell your neighbor, I'm the one next to be lifted. Somebody did not hear me. Amongst all God's children, when I come to church, I look at myself as God's favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't hear me. You need to see yourself the way God sees you. We can all be in this church, everybody screaming and shouting. But when Baba God wants to answer, he will have to say, Where is John first? Where is, where is John? Where is John? Somebody may God answer you this year. I don't care how many people are in your family. If Grace could locate Joseph in number 11, Grace can locate you. Think, my God, I said Grace will locate you. I said Grace will locate you. I said Grace will locate you. Listen to me, listen to me. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Because you people want to preach me away now. Sit down. It is only the grace of God that can make the person that was the last to be confessed. That tells you God knows how to pick people. God picked Esther and offer offer no father, no mother, nobody to recommend her. If I was a gate man that recommended her. Stop looking for some people there. You think, no, the whole God will use to lift you. It will blow your mind. Listen to me, not only will it blow you, it will blow the person's mind too. Recommended Esther. Esther amongst all the ladies. The Bible says immediately the king saw her. Ah, he said, this, this search is over. This year, when you appear, every other stretch will be over. He said God, Job said, God has delivered me. Pull up the scripture one more time, please help me. Just leave it there for a while. God has delivered me from going down to the pit. He said, and I shall leave. So you must declare. In that state, if you know what had happened to Job, Job had lost his children. Job had lost everything, his companies. He was the, one of the greatest men, of the greatest men in the, man in the East. The greatest. Let me explain to you. Pick one of these great men without mentioning the name of any of the billionaires. Everything gone. Wife, everything. Just imagine that. For that was the situation of Job. And he declared. The man of God told us in the first service that there is power in the words that you declare. So what I'm telling you is when you are in the pit, don't confess like someone in the pit. Many people, it is their words that have dug them deeper. I'm going to prove it to you because I'm teaching you some things today. If I will shout a little bit, you would calm down a little bit with the word. He said it with his mouth. He said, and I shall live to enjoy the light of life. So no matter how life tosses and turns you this year, you must confess with your mouth. In this land of the living, I shall be lifted up. Oh my God. There is, you don't know that what will put you in the pit or take you out of the pit is by the words of your mouth. Tell you about the words of your mouth are powerful. Yeah. I want to show you in the scripture. Last Sunday I shared with you that the ways people get into a pit, number one is ignorance. Lack of wisdom. Today I want to show you how the words of your mouth can dig you deeper into a pit or pull you out of the pit. The words, tell you about the words of your mouth. Proverbs 18 verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power 
of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So whatever your life is, is a product of your words. Death and life. If you will die, it is your words that will kill you first before you go in. Most people, they begin to speak in that way, I'm already dying. God forbid. No, you are not dying. If someone say, oh, you, you, you are a failure. No, don't take what the people have said to you. The man of God said it again this morning. Don't, 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 don't begin to agree with your enemy or somebody that is looking at you and say, oh, sometimes I come into the clinic and I want to talk to you. But you say, oh, here comes trouble. I say, no, 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 no. Here comes blessing. You are not hearing me. I say, man, think it in his heart. So we see. I reject it. Take it back. You might be trouble. I am a solution. Tell your neighbor, I'm a global miracle. You didn't hear me. I didn't say local champion. Tell your neighbor, I'm a global miracle. Some people are not talking next to you. Leave them alone. Look for another person that agrees with you. Tell them, I am a global miracle. I am a solution to my world. Joseph looked at himself like that. Don't allow somebody begin to push you to make you accept who you are not. Doctor say you are depressed. So you say, yeah, I'm depressed. No, doctor. I'm not depressed. I am lifted. What are you talking about? So when they begin to tell you you are depressed, so people begin to behave depressed. Don't you know, I'm suffering from, de- you are suffering from depression. Uh, uh, no, God forbid. God, tell you about God forbid. No. Why would, you, why, would, why would a doctor that did not form you suddenly diagnose you? Now listen to me. I'm not denying facts. Are you hearing me? I'm not saying that you don't have some strange behavior. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? I, I, that's not what I'm saying. That sometimes you don't see yourself. Hey, do you know what? Everybody acts strange at some point. You want me to prove it to you? Okay. If someone had looked at Jonah in the scripture, they would think he's bipolar. Well, who gave him medication? Oh, you don't believe me? Jonah, one minute. Nineveh, you people are dead. You are de- In fact, you are finished. You are, you are telling them that all of a sudden, when he was done preaching the gospel, he sat down to rest. There was a shade that God caused that shade to die. He said, God just came in now. now. And I thought you were trying to tell people that they were going to die. So God, I'm just trying to make you understand. Okay, e- Elijah. Elijah that caught fire down. All of a sudden, he ran away from Jezebel. It don't make no sense. Then all of a sudden, God told him, where are you? He said, I'm the only one left. Truly, are you really the only one left? <laughs> but remember, to prove to you that he's not the only one left, remember, even Obadiah told him, I have hidden some. So how can you say you are the only one left? Peter. You know Peter? Today, Peter, he said, you are the Christ. The son of the living God. Tomorrow, Jesus told him, get thee behind me, you Satan. Jesus called Satan. To you that says flesh and blood did not reveal to you. Listen to me. Emotions of life will make you go up and down. If you follow emotions, you will quickly go to the pit. But if you follow the word of God, you quickly rise from the pit. Tell your neighbor, I am rising out of every pit. What am I saying to you today? You must learn to choose words of life. Tell your neighbor, choose words of life. If your spiritual life will go up, you must choose words that will take you out of the pit. Don't say, you know what? Spiritually, I'm just down. When you begin to confess those words, your life will begin to go in the direction of your words. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Some people just tell themselves, you know, I'm going to fail this class. Oh, I'm going to fail this class. So the spirit of fear captures your heart before the exam. So even the questions that you know, when you see it, 
all of a sudden your mind tells you you don't know it. How would you say many people that they tick the first answer correctly? But something told them it is wrong. So they wiped it away. And they choose the wrong answer. And when they suddenly came, I said, ah, Lord, how are you? I actually got it. Listen to me. That's why the Bible said, God has not given you the spirit of fear. But the spirit of love, the spirit of power, and of a what? Sound. Today, receive a sound mind in Jesus. So hear me, people of God. One way that people can get into peace in destiny. Why am I saying this? God prophetically may have lifted us, and I agree he has done that, from the pit. Make sure you don't construct another one. If not, we will have to go through this process again. That's why it seems like sometimes believers go through a cycle. Today they are up, tomorrow they are down. Because what happens is the world pulls them out. Then the next minute, they allow the situation and the surroundings to dictate to them what they now begin to do. And suddenly, they find themselves in the pit. I'll prove it to you. One day, Jesus told the disciples, go. And there was a storm. And Jesus was showing. And Peter said, ah, master, if it is you, you all remember the scripture? Bid me to come. And Jesus said, what? Come. And immediately, Peter stepped out started to walk upon the water. You all remember that? As long as he kept looking at Jesus, kept walking upon the water. Then all of a sudden, Peter looked around and said, oh my God, I'm walking upon water. I'm walking upon water. Really what happened was, he walked upon the word come. That word from Jesus come, congealed the water. So each step that Peter took, he took it upon the words of Jesus. So if I, Jesus, anything can mean anything. The word come. Once he enters that situation of water, he freezes water. Because the word is enough to sustain Peter. Yeah. You're not hearing me. That doesn't deny the fact that he, he was water. That's what I'm saying. That your faith is not the denial of fact. But all of a sudden, Peter allowed fear. And hear this, everybody. And he began to sink. Excuse me. You don't begin to sink. You sink. <laughs> so what he simply meant was, each time he allowed fear, the fear eroded the foundation of the word. Every word you keep getting, until it is completely eroded and you see yourself in there. That's why sometimes we come to church, how would you notice that when you come to church, you are so full of world? Far when you take them with you, meet me outside, I will punch you. <laughs> then suddenly you get home. Then you look at the bees. I say, Ah, Father. <laughs> That's begin to say. Then all of a sudden you discover that you are completely gone. And it seems like you are back to the same state you were. So what I'm telling you is, do not allow the fear of the situation to determine the outcome. The word of God is enough to sustain you. If God has said it, the word is enough to do it. May the word of God lead you out of every pit this year. Come on, if you believe it, let me hear your amen like thunder. So here the people of God, how can a man, how can a man with his words dig pit for himself? Ladies and gentlemen, when you speak words that are not words of God, when you speak what the devil tells you to say, when you begin to confess negativity, you begin to speak degrading words concerning yourself, you dig in a pit for yourself. When you expose truths and secrets that God has given to you, to the devil, you have succeeded in giving the devil the power to dig a pit for you. You will not dig a pit for yourself. Amen. Hear what Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 2 says. It says, thou art ensnared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. If you read it in the Holman Christian Bible, it says you are being trapped by the words of your lips. So if you say, oh, this year it seems like I'm I'm going to fail this course. Your words become a trap. That even when you are meant to succeed, the trap holds you. 
this year may God deliver you from negative words sometimes when we talk too much when you speak, you are always commenting on everything you are so opinionated that you, you, you cannot even listen to what people are telling you it's about what you want to say your words can dig a trap for you how did I know that Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 19 the Bible says, if you read in, in King James Version, it says, in the multitude of words, they wanted not seen, but he that refrained his lips is wise. Let me show you again. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 19, NIV. Sin is not ended by multiplying words. New Living Translation says, too much talk leads to sin, and sin is a bit. English Standard Version says, when words are many, transgression is not lacking. American Standard Version says, when there are many words, transgression is unavoidable. When you begin to talk too much, you will sin against God. And in that process, you have dug a pit for your destiny. This year, may you not sin against God with your word. <laughs> Hear this. So God now told us in James chapter 1 verse 19, Beloved, everybody understand this. James 1.19. He said, everyone should be quick to listen. Slow to speak. Slow to what? Anger. Some people out of anger, they hit somebody. And that hit caused somebody to die. Now they are charged for manslaughter. Some people, through the words that they declared, enmity started between two families. And now, attack commences from there. Some people through boasting and just giving the word. Some people by saying things they shouldn't say on the job. Some people have lost their job by talking too much. Tell anybody, don't talk too much. Okay. Hear this. James chapter 3 verse 2. He said, we all stumble in many ways. James 3 2. If anyone is never at fault, at what he says. The Bible says he's a perfect man. Able to control his whole body. So if you don't fall. If you don't fall into problems. With the word. You can deliver your body. From beats. You see. James 3 2. Hear this. Ecclesiastes 5 3. For the dream comes from much effort. And the voice of a fool. Through many words. Let me say this to you this year. It's not everything you should say. It's not all your plans you should tell people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Joseph found himself in the strange land for 13 years because he talked too much. Nobody... <laughs> Nobody deserves to know your tomorrow. You are not hearing what I'm saying. Keep some things to yourself. It's not everything you react to. Some things. It is well. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not everything. It's not every answer you have. That you tell people. It's not all your secrets that people should know. They are not the Holy Spirit. They don't, they don't need to know. It's not all the body you have. You should tell people. Some people tell, I have a house here. You have a house. That's how they became, they had enemies. Ladies and gentlemen, why do you want to create problems for yourself? That you should never have. Some people are fighting battles. Unnecessary battles. By the word. You know how? The doggy pit. But this year. By the word of God. Whether you put yourself with your mouth. Or your enemy put you in that pit. I see Jehovah lifting you by fire. I want to show you a scripture. Of someone that we all know. How he found himself. In the pit.
His name is Samson. Samson. Full of power. If you read the book of Samson, in the book of Judges chapter 16, Judges 16 verse 6, Delilah said to Samson, tell me I pray thee, wherein is thy great power, thy strength, where does he lie? Hear this everybody, Judges 16 verse 6, everybody, read one to go. And Delilah said to, okay, tell me I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lies, and where we thou mightest be bound. Okay, this is King James Version. Put it in NIV. If you have NLT, we'll try that one too. So, read one to go. Did you, did you put medicine in your mouth? Excuse me, excuse me. Tell me the secret of your power so that your 2018 will not prosper. Fire will burn Delilah tonight. You better shout amen. I'm not joking here. Any year that is a sepulchre the ear that is a beat do you know some ears are beats do you know some ears some people's ears are beats oh taco zegada lock up rakasu degeda even anybody that gossip about you and so from there you deliver you got more enemies today may fire destroy every beat you are coming out of that pit tonight by fire. I say you are coming out by fire. You are coming out by fire. If you believe it, let me hear the Lord and say amen. Delilah asked Samson the first time. Samson, if you just tie me with some green ropes. And Delilah tied him. And she walks. Samson, your enemies are here. Samson destroyed it. I saw the enemy. Something did not there. Something did not click. Be careful of acceptance of friends that will destroy. Let me be clear to you. Not every friend is your friend. I'm the one. Tell them your pastor said. You are, sit down. Tell them. <laughs> you, you people are not hearing what I'm saying. Tell them that your pastor said you are not my friend. They should come and blame me. Anybody that will not move your life forward will move your life backward. Today, may God deliver you from evil friends. You keep following this friend. You keep scoring 50, 60, 65. You never go more than C. Ah! Cut that friend off. Look for another friend that score A. I'm the one that said it. When I was in college, all of us in one discussion group, our discussion group in ana for anatomy, Everybody, all of us were not passing. Everybody. Ha. Do, do tests. All of us. 56, 65. Just hovering under that anointing. Ha. All of a sudden, I saw one of the ladies left the group. Never. She, she, she left the group. She went to join another group. Everybody, sir, in that group passed. All of us <laughs> in our old group failed. Ah, I told them I'm the one that formed it. I'm the one that's going to destroy that group today. 
They told me, you know, you're not coming to the group. I said, no. It's dissolved. I went to look for another group. Check, check your financial friends. You see yourself in a financial place. Maybe the people you are hanging around with, they have financial woes. And go and watch. All of them will be they are just struggling with credit card. Hey, how do you, I didn't pay my own credit card. Bill. Ah, this credit card bill, when are we going to come out for me? No, no, you don't need that kind of friend. You need a friend that doesn't have no credit card bill. So that you can come out. Today you are coming out of every pit. Something, something leaked the secret of his power. You all know that. And all of a sudden, Delilah subdued him. Delilah subdued him. They plucked out his eyes. That's the first thing they took. And they took out his vision. The reason why, if you notice, one of the things that happens to people in pits, they can't see far. And you just wonder, why are they acting like people that can't see? You, you try to tell them anything, they can't make any headway. They don't even know how to come out. Ask people in debt, they don't know how to come out of debt. So don't get stuck there. You need to look up to God. You need to look up to God, where comes your help to pull you out. May Jehovah pull you out today. Amen. And guess what? The Bible says, and they tied Samson, put him to the dungeon, that's Pete. And he started to grind grains for his enemies. Why did Samson become a servant to his enemies? Because he talked too much. Tell your neighbor, look at your neighbor now, tell your neighbor, don't talk too much. Yes, yes. How can you deliver yourself from this speech of too many words? As I bring this to a close, you must tell your neighbor, you must watch your word. Watch your words. Watch your words. Another thing you must do is you must watch your thoughts. Why did I say watch your thoughts? Because the Bible says, hear this, in Luke chapter 6 and verse 45, the good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good. An evil man out of the evil treasure in his heart brings forth that which is evil. For his mouth speaks from what his heart is filled with. Another translation will say, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So hear me, that is why we come to the house of God. Do you know why we come to the house of God? So that good words can be deposited into your heart bank. A man that does not know the way to the presence of God, if you like, speak positive words. You cannot. Because you can only release what is stored in. That's why David said, Thy word have I hid. If you don't hide it, you can't pull it out. Some people say, well, they just want to come to church every day. You need it for your future. The word that you store in, will be what will save you tomorrow. Tell your neighbor, get the word in. Spend time to put word of God. This Bible, the Bible says, do not let this law, word of the Lord, depart from your mouth. But upon this law, meditate. Day and night. Meditation means put it inside your heart. Study it. Sometimes you are in the bus station. Sometimes you are in, you are in your own break. Sometimes you are hanging out with friends. Sometimes you are, I don't know, wherever you are, personally. Take word of God. Put it in your heart. You will need it. So that the kind of words that come out of your mouth will be words that will pull you out of pits. May the Lord give you a word that will pull you out. Amen. Psalm 45 verse 2 is where I'm going. But look at Psalm 45 verse 1. The Bible says, my heart is stirred by a noble team. If you, if you, if another word of truth, I just say, my heart is indicting a what? A good matter. If you indict positive things, lifting things, things that will lift you up, you will always get out of pits. 
But if in your mind you're always conceiving negativity, how to pull people down, how to undercut people, how to speak evil of people, you don't see good about anybody, nobody is good around you, nobody is nice, you are the only one, anything negative. What are these brother? This brother, ah, hmm. only God knows what is going. What are this sister? <coughs> only God knows what she's doing. What are this brother? Oh, everybody's bad, and you are the only good person. Your heart is not in that in a good matter. Somebody hear what I'm saying? David said, my heart is in that in a good matter. He said, I speak, he said, I speak of things which I have made. Touching what? The king. The king is exalted. Things that are touching God. Things that are about lifting. Things are about exalting. Things are about building. If they ask you what is a good news, you say, no, there's nothing good. Oh, this one is bad. They ask what CNN say, oh, CNN. <laughs> There was war in Afghanistan. There's war in China. The only the negative. You have to learn to get good positive news. My tongue is the pen of what? A ready writer. Now look at verse 2. He said, thou art fairer. And I said, thou art most excellent of the children of men. Hear this. He said, when grace is poured into thy leaves. He said, therefore, God has blessed you forever. <laughs> this morning, may grace be poured into your lips. Do you know, do you know that what got Joseph out of the prison were his words? There's a way he addressed the king. He said, oh, excellent king. The dream you had, this is what it means. Oh, excellent king. The thing that you had, it means this seven thin ones. Even though it was thin ones, he didn't say the thin ones like, oh, the th <laughs> thin ones, oh, they are dead. No! Seven years of famine. That's what it means. In fact, the other one you had is still the same. They mean one and the same. Even in the way that Joseph presented the dream, the king would be wondering, is it me that dream that dream? <laughs> <laughs> There's a way you will speak to somebody. Some people, it is their words that got them married quickly. I'm telling you. There's a way somebody will talk to you. Eh? You will remember the person. You'll be thinking about the person. There's some people, they are fine, but when they open them, I say, ah, excuse me. Sorry, I made a mistake. I'm telling you. Some people are so nice when they talk. Anything you have, you give it to them. That's some people, when they near you, the words they're saying, oh, encouraging. When they're near you, they, 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 they make you feel good. They make your spirit lifted up. Amen. So you want to hang around them. Yeah. That's some people, when you see them, you just say hi, <laughs> and you go the other way. <laughs> your words, when grace is poured upon your lips, no God has blessed you forever. From today, anywhere you appear, when you open your mouth, may grace be poured upon your lips. If you believe it, let me hear the loudest. Amen. Hear me, people of God. It's important that you watch your words, you watch the thoughts, you breathe through your tongue. Learn to speak slowly. Don't be quick to speak. It's not everything you comment on. Some people have criticized their hair power of destiny. I'll tell you one principle I learned quickly as a pastor. God told me, any member you condemn can never be your member. Ask my wife. If you are quick to cause people out, you are quick to find evil in a person. God will not keep them around you. Because number one, they are God's people. Let me tell you. They may not be precious to you. But to God, they are very precious. Have you heard that statement? You cannot eat your cake and have it. When my mom first gave me that proverb, I thought it was real cake. <laughs> so, so I wanted to say, ah, is there cake in the house? I didn't know it was a problem. I didn't know it was the proverb. Listen to me. Be careful who you criticize in church. Be careful who you criticize at work.
Sometimes the people you are praying against are the people that are going to write you a good recommendation letter. Not every pharaoh is an evil pharaoh. The one that will recognize Joseph is a good pharaoh. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If God brings you, don't, don't, there are some things you don't understand. Don't be quick. If you open your mouth and condemn your pastor, eh? Then you have thanksgiving. Who's going to pray over you? No, no, talk to me. Who is going to bless? Who blesses your offering? Whenever you condemn, that place where you condemn, you can never get blessing from them. That is why you discover anything you criticize, you can't enjoy. If you don't know what to say, don't dig a pit. The moment, hear me, the moment Laban started to speak evil over Jacob, God told Jacob, pack your load. It's time to go. Tonight. The Bible says, and Jacob found out that the countenance of Laban and his children had changed because God said, tonight, we are leaving. No matter how blessed Laban was because of him. But I'm telling you, are you all hearing me? As God is blessing you, as God is prospering you, not everything in fact, rather learn to speak building words. Tell you never speak positive words. I didn't hear. Tell you never speak positive words. Yes, yes. Slow to speak, quick to hear. Make sure you hide God's word in your heart. Make sure that the words that you put in are the things that you meditate day and night. They are the word of God. This word of God. Chew it. Eat it. Confess it. Read it. Claim it. Receive it. Let the word of God be your guide. It will pull you out of every pit. I'm telling you. It will pull you out. It will give you the wisdom on how to act in negative situations. It will give you the wisdom on how to behave. It will give you the secrets of how to come out. Listen to me. When I was in a difficult situation in my career in school, I'm telling you the word of God. One day God told me, he said, John, you are finding it difficult to, to understand what they are teaching you in school. I said, yes, Lord. So God gave me a secret through the word of God. He told me. He said, look, let me tell you, son. He said, in the word of God, wisdom and understanding is that. I said, yes. He said, okay, good. Ask me for the wisdom I used to make the truth. He made man in his own image and after his likeness. So I said, God, if you make me in your image and in your likeness, you made the truth also. I said, yes. I said, God, can you give me the wisdom that you used to make the truth? I said, yes. Okay. So God now told me, number two, Follow peace with all men. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. He said, no matter what they do to you in clinic, be nice. Even to that professor that you think hates you, find a compliment and give to him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'll tell you how to dig yourself out of it. This is a man that told me, if you do it again, if you cut this prep again, you know when they say, well, there was a way I cut a prep. You all don't know what I mean by cut prep. When you, when you have a decay in the tooth, and you cut, you have to cut the decay out. When I cut the decay in one tooth and I put it together, it wasn't a human being, it was just a, a model. Even me myself, I told myself, if you are to mark this work, I will kick you out. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? Ask my wife, because then we, we, we just started talking. So the Lord told me. Ask her. Our relationship is not about love, love. She became my prayer partner. She knew the name of all the professors. Yes or no? Uh -uh. We started praying. I said, this is the man's name. So, I remember another scripture. The heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. I'm telling you that how to get out of it. This is a man. Let me tell you what it means. If he said they are going to kick you out of clinic for two weeks. Anybody know what it means? Clinical. If they kick you out of clinic for two weeks. What it simply means is, you're actually repeating the whole year. And before me, sir, I was seeing 40,000 loan per year. In fact, eh, I don't know if you know when you see your loan and they told you are repeating the year, your heart will sink. So before me, I saw a repeating year, sir. I saw a repetition of what had happened in my past. When I failed the exam and I repeated the year, ah, I said, God, no, 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 no. It cannot happen again. So God said, mention his name before my throne and ask him to favor you. 
I'm telling you how to come out. When I said you are coming out of it, it's not just by the prophetic. I'm showing you the secrets. So I brought the man's name before the Lord. I said, Lord, this man, every day before I enter clinic, are you hearing me? As, I, as they open the door, it's clinic time. I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, over the hallway, they must favor me today. Makasa tapakali, baba. Ba. I took anointing oil. I anoint my whole place. If you like, say, what is this greasy thing? It is the power of God. I... Why did God give you have a bottle? You have a bottle in your house. Eh? You have a bottle in your house. The line of that bottle has not moved since January 2017. Is it not the anointing that breaks the yoke? So I say, Lord, you must favor me. So when it is time to call the man to supervise, you know what I do? The Lord told me, with your mouth, you speak good things to build. Speak words that we build up. So every time I see the man, I just appreciate the man. You are coming to supervise my work. Sister, you are looking good today. Mbo? Sorry. Did you hear? Sir, before he even supervised the work, sir, you are looking great. You are looking very nice. He says, oh, thank you, brother. Brother John, thank you. By the time he sits down, he will only, in my mind, I say, Lord, this man must see good things. Okay, talk. You know what I'm talking about? By the time he's done, the man can give me four over four. Four over four. Four over four. See, we finished that year. I had the highest in that course. Number eight in the entire school. Guess who wrote my recommendation letter? It was the same man. The same man that told me, we will kick you out. Was the same man God used. Let me tell you, whoever put you in the pit, God will use them to pull you out of the pit. How did I know that? Is it not the same people that put Joseph in the pit? It's the same people that pulled him out of the pit. The same people that went to tell Jacob, Joseph, your son, is dead. It's the same people that sent back and went back to Jacob. Your son Joseph is not anybody that put you in the pit. They will change their language and pull you out. God will use them to pull you out. God will use them to pull you out. God will use them to pull you out. If you believe it, wave your hands and shout a big hallelujah. Rise up to your feet, everybody. My word for you today is that speak good words. Tell you about speak good words. Speak positive words. Don't speak negative. Confess the word of God. Start the word in your heart. Build it in your mind. Meditate upon it. Don't allow anybody speak evil against you. You declare. When they tell you you are down, you don't say no, 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 no. I am up. Did the word of God not say when men are cast down, then thou shall say, be lifted. And you shall be lifted. Today I prophesy to every area of your life. Wherever men have casted you down, you shall be lifted this year. I said you shall be lifted this year. Lift up your hands and begin to magnify the Lord. Say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I shall be lifted. I want you to declare things concerning your life. I want you to prophesy things concerning your destiny, concerning your future. Say, Lord, I shall be lifted up. I refuse the report of the enemy. I refuse the confession of the enemy. There is a lifting for me. There is a lifting for me. There is a lifting for me. I said there is a lifting for me. I decree and declare concerning my home. My home is blessed. My children are blessed. My future is blessed. My life is blessed. Every area of my life. I want you to open your mouth. Declare the word of God. If you are a student and you are struggling with school. I want you to come to the altar. If there is any area of your life where there is a struggle. And you know that you seem like you are in the pit. I want you to declare before God today. I am coming out of that pit uh, by the word of God. Uh, I refuse to confess negative. Uh, I refuse to confess negative. Uh, I declare the word of God. Uh, I declare a lifting. I declare a lifting. There is a lifting for me. There is a lifting for me. I believe the word. 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 My case is settled. I am blessed and highly favored. I am lifted. I am lifted. I am lifted. I don't believe what the doctor said. I declare what God has said. 
If the doctor says you are hypertensive, begin to declare my hypertension is God. My blood pressure is perfect. If the doctor said your child is sick, say I refuse the doctor's report. I declare my child is healed. If the doctor said a word, say no, God has said something different. God said I'm blessed and highly favored. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Come on, let me hear your amen greater than your neighbor. Lift your hands like you want God to pull you out. Today, Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus, everyone under the sound of my voice, by the power of the Holy Ghost, may we be pulled out of that pit now in Jesus' name. Every pit that we may have dug for ourselves by words, every pit that we may have dug for ourselves by our confession or by agreeing with the statements of the devil today in the name of jesus we believe the report of the lord i said we believe the report of the lord i said we believe the report of the lord we are healed in the name of jesus we are saved in the name of jesus we are delivered in the name of jesus we are ransomed by the blood of jesus we declare we are delivered from everything in the name of Jesus. And we shall enjoy the light of life. I speak to anyone under the sound of my voice. I speak into your life. I speak over your life. Any beat that you have been kept in, today you are lifted in Jesus' name. Any beat your family has been kept in, you are lifted in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father for the power of your word we give you all the praise and glory in jesus mighty name we have prayed if you are lifted let me hear you shout i am lifted three times one more time one more time clap your hands and give god praise you may go back to your seat god bless you thank you so much for watching this broadcast we pray that this message ministered to your heart if you are watching this message and you do not know Jesus Christ, we want to give you an opportunity to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Just say this simple prayer with us. Father, forgive me, for I have sinned against you. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you died and rose for my sins. I denounce and renounce any other God that I may have put before you. Jesus, save my life. If you said that simple prayer, we want to welcome you into the body of Christ. God is going to do some amazing things in your life. Join us at Bethel Covenant Assembly of God Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. at 6812 Bandera Road in San Antonio, Texas. And be sure to stay connected with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube.